Business Brain, episode 467 for Wednesday, July 19th, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show where we take all kinds of topics, things in our business lives, things in our personal lives, we run them through our business brains to give us perspective and to train our business brains to be a little bit better, to tune them, perhaps, to be even better and allow us to keep on living that charmed life. Sponsors for this episode include Pearl Diver, where you get to visit pearldiver.io and learn who is visiting your website. Uh, we'll talk more in depth about that in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. You know, I find myself often explaining uh, the name business brain because I, I always want to be clear when I'm talking to somebody about it. It's like, well, no, Dave and I are not the business brains. It's right. a, a collective that we are fine tuning our, our business brains together, learning from one another, you know, feedback from listeners, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I love it. I'm, I find Same. my my tuning f- uh, you know, is getting more and more fine, especially I think the last, uh, I don't know, half dozen shows or, uh, or so I've really enjoyed it. So yep. I hope that, uh, it's working for everybody else as well. And let us know feedback at businessbrain.show. Yeah. We want to know if it's like, if it's helping you, if there's more we can do, if there's ideas you have feedback at businessbrain.show. You want yeah, to, uh, great. you want to talk about this concept of you, you brought to me and I would like yes. to talk about this concept of multi-level employees or, you know, yeah. the, the off work conduct of, of, yeah. Like it's interesting. Yeah. I, I saw a, a, a tweet that I came across, uh, talking about, um, someone posted, Hey, how would you handle, you know, uh, an employee posting something? And I, you know, I got quotes in the air inappropriate, uh, in, you know, on, on social media sure. that could reflect badly on your company. And, you know, that's kind of a sticky area. Can you, how do you, or can you advise people how to, what to put? No, you, I, I don't think you can. Right. I, but I don't, I, I might, I, I actually, I might disagree maybe. with that. It depends on what it is. And, and yeah, there is and what they do. And right? they're, yeah, they're and what they do they're for real. you. And, uh, you know, I mean, people put in their Twitter bios or their Facebook bios or whatever, you know, these tweets are personal and do not reflect the opinions yeah. of my employer. That's a, and that yes. that I, I mean, it's a smart it's thing a to hedge. put there, yeah. but it's a hedge. But I think it's yeah. also safe to assume, um, yes. you know, but if someone it depends on whether that's true or not. Right. If someone's using their personal Twitter account or personal Instagram or whatever. Never there's, mentions yeah. anything about their job, never relates yep. it to their job. There's zero in there about their work. And, you know, they post something that you as an employer are uncomfortable with. Uh, you kind of got to leave them alone. That's my, yeah, that's my I feeling agree. on it. However, I agree too. However, yeah. <laughs> if th- there's, there, there's, you know, these things aren't binary, right? If there's right. the nuance uh, of, well, if they're posting a bunch of stuff about the work that they do, and then they're posting some like, weird thing in their personal life that isn't good for your business's brand. That's different. I'm not saying it's definitely yeah, like could, terminatable offense, but yeah. it's a, it's an offense. It, it's something to have a conversation about. Like, something to have a, and that's what, the, so that one of the, one of the folks that responded in there, th- this is what got me thinking. They, yeah. they said, yeah, this is a challenge. And when they hire employees or during the, the course of having employees, they say, Hey, we have two types of employees. We uh, and our preferred employees are team members. We invest in team members. We committed to providing them all the hours they can handle. We develop a career path for them, training. And here's what they say: they we expect you to be a professional uh, as a team member, consistent with you, their position. Da, da, da. And they prov- uh, we define a professional as a good ambassador for our company and trade because this was a contractor. Okay, twenty four seven. And then they exp- that they would explain how the they thought the post was not professional. It wasn't like, hey, it's not appropriate or whatever. Yeah. But uh, you know, and so you know, they say you can't tell them how to act. You can only explain how you would like them to be professional and how that impacts their future at your at your business. So I, I thought that was pretty intriguing. This multi level 
uh, employee status that, I mean, I'm all about career paths and, yeah. and really giving employees a, a, a clear vision of where they could go with your business. Cause I think it really helps them and it helps you and being able to say, hey, yeah, we have employees, but we also have team members and this is how you become a team member the, the, and the, the latter instead of the former. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, I thought it's, that was kind of cool. It's interesting. I'm trying to think if I've ever had to discuss like, you know, someone's social media presence with personal social media presence with, with an employee because it, it didn't, you know, fit with what I would have preferred them to say. Like, I, I don't yeah. think that's ever happened. And I, and I don't even think I've ever been in a position where I've had to make the decision as to whether or not I want to have that conversation. Right. Cause I could, I could be upset or, or, or concerned about something and also choose not to mention it. Right. Like, you know, yeah, um, I don't even right. think I've been in that scenario. Although maybe I, there, there, I, there's something in the back of my mind is saying that I have, um, but, but it, so you know, I it's have rare. It, 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 yeah. And, but, and I just, but it depends. How you, how you it. Yeah. It, 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 like to me, it depends on their reach too. Like if you've got an employee who is, yeah. you know, has, has 50 Twitter followers and no one in your industry that matters listens to their personal Twitter profile, you know, like that's one thing. But then if you've got somebody that's got, you know, 25,000 Twitter followers in part, perhaps because of their position in the industry, which is what then led to their position in your yeah. company. Right. That's a little different. Right? Now it's a little different. And, but usually the good part is you, you get to know those people and you don't hire the ones that are out there, you know, spewing things that, yes, that either or, upset or you, you could, or upset the public in general. Right. Like, yeah. cause there's a, there's two things, right. It's like, well, you said that on Twitter and I, don't like it, but it's not offensive to the world. It just happens to not sort of align with me like that. Right. I, that's one thing. And and to me that you sort of dismiss that, but the uh, other uh, yeah. is and if they're I, out there I, I spewing hate, yeah, no, <laughs> you know, objective yeah. hate or something. It's like, well, dude, <laughs> I, you know, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Hopefully you didn't, you know, make the mistake of hiring that kind of person in mm. the first place. But I, right. I love this concept of explaining how, Hey, you can post whatever you want, you know, but we, I don't think that's a professional, you know, post, especially if it's like to your point, Dave, if it's related to your industry, your trade, yeah. or if they're, if they are very well known within your industry. Um, so, you know, hopefully you can have a discussion and, you know, and that's just that this one aspect of this, I, I love the concept of the, this pathway to becoming a team member yeah. and you can have to earn it. And, and we're going to do a, a show uh, soon about being in service to your employees, which I think is very important, but also they need to be in service, obviously to your business and, and giving them that clear defined path. This is how you become a, a valued team member or call them whatever you want. So many employees don't get that message. And I, and that's why I love this concept. All right. Hey, look, do you still wonder who all those people are who are visiting your website but never convert and then just disappear? Good news. You get to discover the game-changing tool that top professionals are raving about. It's our sponsor, Pearl Diver. Pearl Diver is a cutting-edge platform that provides in-depth visitor identification, enabling you to uncover valuable insights about your website visitors. By uncovering the names, the emails, the company details, and more, Pearl Diver empowers you to turn anonymous traffic into high-quality leads. With Pearl Diver, you'll supercharge your marketing and sales strategy. You don't have to settle for guesswork. Dive deep into your visitor data with Pearl Diver and revolutionize your customer acquisition game. Are you ready to make waves? Yeah, because with Pearl Diver, you get to see actual people visiting your website. You know their names, their emails, their phones, their titles, their company details. And you never have to miss out on the opportunity to engage with your hottest leads. Pearl Diver matches your email interactions with identified website visitors, providing you the insights you need to close your next deal. So go check it out. Visit PearlDiver.io. Again, that's PearlDiver.io. And try Pearl Diver today. And our thanks to Pearl Diver for sponsoring this episode.
And while I got you here, I've got a recommendation for you. When it comes to Apple, these folks know what they're talking about. Of course, I'm talking about Leo Laporte of Twit, right? He bought his first Mac over 40 years ago in 1984 and has been an Apple lover ever since. That's probably why they have three, not one, not two, but three Apple podcasts on the Twit podcast network. The oldest one, of course, is Mac Break Weekly. Started almost 20 years ago. Alex Lindsay, Andy Anotko, Jason Snell, and Leo talk about the latest Apple news. They are Apple fans, but not Apple fanboys. They call it as they see it. And sometimes they're even a little hard on Apple. They also do a show called iOS Today with Micah Sargent and Rosemary Orchard. And if you're into iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches, or Apple TV, you'll love iOS Today. And of course, there's now Hands on Mac. Inside tips from Micah Sargent on getting you the most out of your Mac every week. Expert analysis, helpful advice, and entertaining discussions. So go to twit.tv slash Apple and find your next Apple podcast. And our thanks to Leo and the team for doing this swap with us. So you brought me a topic that, believe it or not, we've mentioned, I think, at least three times in the show I over the years. I think you have, yeah. I have, You yeah. brought it up a few times. Yeah, yeah. and I, it's a topic I love, and it is the concept of beginner's mind. And, and I, would, yeah. I would love to hear your, it, it, the way you perceive this topic. Yeah, so this beginner's mind is, you know, we all uh, build up, uh, for lack of a better word, our own biases and viewpoints and frameworks over time. And if we stick to those all the time, like I know how things are, I know how things work. I've been in this situation before. We often, or there's a possibility at least that we're going to miss out on something, uh, a totally. opportunity, yeah. a relationship that didn't, you know, start because you thought something, but this beginner's mind w is in my uh, understanding is to kind of clear yourself of those preconceived beliefs to open up, uh, you know, opportunities that, that can may come that you may be missing or lean in in a different way. Yeah. I, I think of it as approaching everything like a child. Now I yeah. don't, I don't yes. mean like a, an immature person. I, yes. I mean, with the, the mind, uh, the, the intellectual curiosity of a child is perhaps yeah. the, the right way to say it. And it's like, okay, here's something that I don't know about. Let me do my darndest. And it's not easy, right? Like this is, you know, it, it sounds hard. simple, but yes. you know, to approach it with, okay, let me just be exposed to this for the first time without assuming anything. And, uh, and when you can do that, it, it, a, it's a fast track to learning things because you're not getting in your own way. Uh, but also yeah. you, you, you put yourself in a position where you might actually change your mind about something because you are learning new things. It makes you, it makes me a better learner when I can succeed at that, the beginner's mind concept. It was taught to me by, by Greg Snyder who uh, was my co-founder with Backbeat Media years and years ago. He has, he, I bought him out uh, I don't know, 15 years ago or something like that uh, because- I remember Greg, yeah. Yeah, he, great guy, yeah. He, yep. he he wanted to leave this business because he had started the Brooklyn Zen Center. And for those of you who know the origins of Beginner's Mind, this won't come as any surprise yes. at all <laughs> because it really is a, a concept that has, I don't know if it originated- in the Zen teachings, but it certainly is embraced by and foundational like to the, the Zen teachings. Yeah. It, it would not surprise yeah. me if it was part, sort of, you know, part and parcel of, because it's how they approach everything. It's like, get, yep. get out of your way and just see the information for what it is, not what it means to you based on something you already know. So yeah, no, yeah, I'm, and a, I, I'm a big fan of this. Yeah. Yeah. One definition I really like, it struck with me. It's very simple. It's, living in the moment with as few fixed beliefs as possible. And it that's so important when you're looking at what could be thinking at it with our oh, business yeah. brains, you know, some opportunity. Um, I really got, I'm, I'm in the middle of, of uh, selling a piece of property to the federal government and then buying another piece of property. Sure. And I've really tried to step back and think of things in a different way at, at the beginning of something that could have been a problem turned into an opportunity. And that, that, uh, 
that childlike, you know, thing like, well, let's, let's just see what happens. Let's not uh, presume yeah. that this is going to turn out bad. We know what to didn't... do if it goes sideways. Cause we've been there yeah. before, you know, it's some Correct. version of that. So yep. that's fine. And, and we can trust ourselves that when we get there, if, and when we get there, we, we know what to do, but let's not assume we're going to get there because that assumption might be the thing that, that leads you down that path. Uh, you know, you're like, well, oh, yeah, I, you, I know you how these things impact it. So I'm yes. going to influence this yes. without thinking about it. You, right. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. do it. And, and you'd be so amazed, like, it, especially in this transaction and most people that have dealt with the federal government, maybe uh, they, I've, well, it seems like they haven't had a good experience, me included, but sure. this time I really worked hard to be friendly and to work through it and to get to know these people and try to figure out what they were looking for. And lo and behold, it went really well after, you know, you had to push back and forth a little bit it's any, like any negotiation. Yeah. But the one thing it also, this beginner's uh, mind does, it makes you a much better listener. And because you're not trying to solve something while you're hearing someone else talk. You're really just like, okay, I don't know. And and you said that earlier, Dave, and, and, and that, that those three words are probably the most powerful way to start to get in this beginner's mind framework yeah. is just, I don't know. So tell me and let me see how this unfolds. Um, and, and I love it. And I think we could use it more in our business, uh, you know, working with people, employees, partners, negotiating, I, I think it's something to uh, to continue to look into. Yeah, the concept of beginner's mind might be the ultimate tool in tuning our business brains, uh, or at yeah. least one of the most important ones. One I don't want to say it's the only one, but uh, but yeah, yeah, Love I like it. it. I yeah, think it's great. Same. And if you've, you know, you know, a couple of things. One, if if you have this. Uh, any sort of framework like we talked about before the ads, uh, you know, of multi-level employees and bringing them on, or maybe if you want to relate it to a social media stuff, we'd love to hear from you. Feedback at businessbrain.show. And if you have a beginner's mind, please share your uh, tools with us so we can all get better. Yeah, absolutely. Again, that's feedback at businessbrain.show. And uh, thanks to our sponsors, of course, pearldiver.io. And uh, keep living that charmed life, huh? See you next time. <laughs>